What's good, YouTube? Andre here with the DM Network. Y'all, if you're new to the channel, please raise your hands and lend me your subscriptions. We have a goal trying to reach 10,000 subscribers, and we cannot do that without you guys. It is not possible. I upload videos every single day, seven days a week. So don't forget to turn on bell notifications so you don't miss a single upload. Now on with the video. So today's discussion comes by way of Blue Alpha, which he's been pretty active uh, in the videos. I appreciate the support from all of you, especially Blue Alpha. Uh, but what he wanted to discuss, wanted to talk about, uh, he said, I have an idea for a potential video discussion for you. Post game, which is a very, very interesting topic, by the way. Um, the, the post game, uh, what will post game be like? You know, that kind of thing. Uh, I think that with this sort of game, uh, the post-game features could be really cool. Example, after beating Boo, being able to fly around the map, uh, he said, whenever, uh, being able to fly around the map whenever you like, maybe you could have some special thing to do where you encounter movie villains. It's things like that that make post-game really interesting. Anyway, I think you could make an interesting video on it. So, yeah, do whatever you want, though. But uh, I'm going to do the video, man. I'm going to talk about that post game because I have some interesting thoughts about post game. And I've been thinking since he said that. And by the way, y'all, if y'all have a topic of discussion, let me know in the comment section down below. man. We'll talk about it and you'll get the shout out as well. Give credit where it's due. So. Post game, I like that. And the direction that he's talking about, it seems is more like Budokai 3, where after you've beaten the game, in a sense. Or rather than have a main last boss, you have uh, if you if you do certain things during the story mission at the end, you'll have like, oh, a strong presence or a strong energy has been detected over here. And you go and you you fight Broly or you go and uh, that leads into fighting Omega Shinron and stuff like that. But what he's saying is basically kind of like the same thing. But instead of that, you're fighting movie villains now. In the Super Nintendo game, Legacy of the Legend of the Super Saiyan, you also had that where you could fight Super Saiyan Vegeta at the end, um, which was really weird in a way because the game only went to the Frieza saga. It ended with the Frieza saga, yet Super Saiyan Vegeta was in the game, you know, because really at that point in time, the anime had been finished anyway. And so we already knew Super Saiyan Vegeta was a thing. So, you know, it... it it's one of those things, you know, well, could this game go to the uh, go to the Frieza saga? Will it go to the Boo saga? That's yet to be determined. But as far as end game goes, what I think would be very interesting for an end game would be uh, martial arts tournaments. Yeah, having and also, like he said, like Blue Alpha said, having some of those uh, boss fights like movie villains. Now, movies aren't uh, CyberConnect 2's forte. However, it's they're the developers. It's up to Bandai and what they want to put in the game. And and Bandai knows that Dragon Ball fans, fans of the Dragon Ball series, we love our movie characters. We love our Dragon Ball movie. So it would be really cool uh, for them to throw some movie characters in there. I I would like for the game to really go through, um, go all the way through to Dragon Ball Battle of Gods because that was a Dragon Ball Z movie, even though the anime version of that took place in Dragon Ball Super, it would be still cool to um, perhaps as an end game kind of thing, have uh, fight Beerus at the end and then uh, possibly be able to train with Whis. But post game is a very serious thing. It's a very important thing because it gives you something to do after you've completed the game. And what I really like is that uh, really what the game is about should be the post game. You look at games like Destiny, for example, you know, after you've beaten the story missions, you've gotten max light level. It's like, what do you do? You know, some people, they go to the crucible and they fight. Some people, they run raids and stuff like that. But if the game's post game is bad, the game won't last. You'll have people play it. They'll complete it. They'll max out their characters and that'll be it. And I know some people are going to use that to say that's why we should have a multiplayer element to the game uh, to where, you know, if you're if you're playing the game after you've beaten it, you know, you can do online matches fighting against your uh, fighting against your opponents and stuff like that. Uh, what I would like 
because I really want more of a single player game for this game is for post game for them to possibly look into procedurally generated enemies in a sense. So essentially your battles are never ending. And if it goes along the lines with what I would like to see, as far as you gaining strength and power, um, you could just continually get stronger and stronger and stronger. Now, of course, the stronger you get, the harder it is to get stronger. That's just natural with anything, but yet and still uh, throwing in those movie villains, uh, like I said, procedurally generated enemies and stuff like that, that scale to your level. Um, also tournaments, tournaments, you know, the Budokai tournaments, you know, having those to look forward to and stuff like that. They're going to have to really, really be mindful of what they do with the, uh, with the post game in this. So blue alpha kudos to you for that thought of discussion, because in all seriousness, that can make or break the game that can literally make or break the game what do y'all think should be in the post game let me know in the comment section down below because man i'm i mean I'm, as i'm sitting here talking about it i'm sitting here thinking there's not many options to choose from and you can see why a lot of games add multiplayer to give the game more longevity so should i change my stance and opt in for some kind of multiplayer element to the game or what would be cool is let's say the multiplayer is added into the end game like the entire game itself is single player but then once you get to the end okay now you can fight multiplayer but here's the thing about multiplayer if multiplayer is in the game they're going to have to do two things one of two things or both one of two things either number one you're going to have to be able to play with other characters besides goku number two you're possibly going to have to have a creative character in the game how else will it work? Otherwise, multiplayer is just going to be a bunch of Gokus fighting other Gokus, and that's not going to be very fun. Even me not being a multiplayer in myself, you know, looking at stuff like that, that that's not uh, fun and entertaining at all, just playing against Goku versus Goku. So if they do have multiplayer in the game, that's almost a dead giveaway that we'll be able to play with multiple characters in this game and or have some form of creative character. My ideal situation that would please everybody uh, would be go the ultimate Tenkaichi route where you have your story mode and then you have an adventure mode where you're able to create a character and in ultimate Tenkaichi story, adventure mode, it wasn't, uh, you weren't from the future. It was a parallel universe is what it was where essentially you were, you know, so I like that idea, you know, now. Yet and still, at the end of the day, I would rather have a multi, a single player game because it's going to give a lot more depth. There's going to be a lot more detail and stuff like that. You look at games like Xenoverse, look at their end game, you know, the raids and stuff like that. I mean, it, there's really nothing else to do in the game aside from playing people online or just, hey, I just want to smash some people around with with the characters. And it's not that fun anymore. You know, there's no, first of all, there's no bang in the game as far as destructible environments, uh, being clashes and stuff like that. So, you know, it's tough to play Xenoverse and feel like you're actually living the anime. So that makes it difficult in and of itself. So it'll be very interesting to see what they do with the post game in this game. Now, uh, I'm currently playing Jump Force, y'all. And y'all know I'm balling out with Vegeta. Vegeta is a beast in Jump Force. I'm loving the game. I'm loving the combo system. I'm loving the, because it's simple. It's simple and it can be um, uh, minorly complex, but, uh, you know, seeing the blast attacks and seeing the destruction when you smashing them into the ground and when you perform your ultimate attacks and stuff like that, it's really, really cool. It's really, really cool. And I, I really wish Xenoverse had went that route, not so much as what the graphics look like. But as far as just how the game plays and flows and stuff, I wish Xenoverse had went that route, but they didn't. Maybe they will in Xenoverse 3, which we'll be talking about here pretty shortly. I will be doing some Xenoverse 3 uh, videos because it's going to happen. Um, but other than that, man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of at a loss here as far as post-game. You know, what will they do for post-game? And Blue Alpha, man, kudos. Y'all give them, give them a like on that comment that he said. but. Because what were they going to do with the post game? You know what I'm saying? I mean, because if training is like it is, like we want it to be in the game, 
then they're going to have to come with something legit for the post game. There's going to have to be, that's the biggest thing that I can see. That's a perfect idea to introduce movie villains. Uh, that's where DLC is going to come into play. Also, I would say uh, throw in some Budokai tournaments. And when I look at post game, it's hard not to say, okay, put multiplayer in the game because then I know it'll give us the ability to play with the other characters as well as potentially having a creative character. So what do y'all think? Let me know down in the comment section down below, y'all. Very good topic of discussion. We will more than likely revisit this because it's so much to it that could possibly happen. But I appreciate y'all for tuning in. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're new. Turn on notifications, y'all. We upload every single day. Blue Alpha, man, kudos, brother. You, you, I got stumped with that one. I got stumped with that one. I like your idea. I, I would have to go with your idea in having movie characters um, as the post game if it is single player based. Uh, if it's some multiplayer elements to it, I would like to see pretty much the norm. You know having tournaments and events and stuff like that. I'm not a big fan of Rage because Rage would require us to have multiple characters on the screen at the same time. And then we fall into the Xenoverse thing with them taking away beam clashes and, and destructible environments and stuff like that. So I don't really want to see Rage. They, I've, they've done that. I want to see that. But let me know what y'all think down in the comment section down below. Appreciate y'all for watching. Until next time, peace.